We're trying to build a complete picture to understand the way that molecules form covalent bonds as well as the shapes that those molecules make because it helps us give a prediction to how molecules are going to react as we're thinking of them interacting with each other. So one of the important ways that we think about the molecular shapes or molecular geometries is by using a theory called VSEPR, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Now what this theory states is that it gives us the ability to relate what a molecule's bonding looks like to the shape that that molecule ends up forming. And it has everything to do with where my electrons are. It's all about minimizing repulsion between the electrons. Uh, and so we think of our electrons as going in different directions within a molecule. So when we're looking at VSEPR, VSEPR takes into consideration our covalent bond pairs and lone pair electrons to think about how they repel each other. So in this theory, it's saying that they're gonna orient themselves in such a way that they're gonna establish a geometry or shape that is gonna minimize the repulsion between the electron pairs. Whether that would be a group of electrons that is sitting in a lone pair orbital or the pairs of electrons that are in between atoms in a covalent bond. So they're kind of in between the space of the nuclei between those two atoms. So they're gonna orient themselves uh, in a way that is going to maximize the distance between them, which minimizes the repulsion of those electron pairs. Now the optimal geometry is predicted by the number of electron groups. Now electron groups are things that we would consider as a lone pair sitting on an atom or a set of covalent bonds. Now because a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond, so a pair of electrons, two pair of electrons, or three pairs of electrons share between two different atoms, because they're going in the same direction uh, between those two atoms, we're gonna consider a single double or triple bond a single electron group. Uh, and so then what that does is that helps inform us on the shapes that our molecules are going to make. Now, if we think of diagramming or visualizing what those shapes look like, if I got two electron groups, it's gonna look something like this, where I just have a linear shape uh, and this molecule is going to have a central atom surrounded by two other atoms. So that's gonna minimize the repulsion of those two groups. If I have three groups, it's gonna orient in a way where I have three electron pairs, where now I have my central atom surrounded by these three other atoms here. If I have four electron groups, it's gonna be a tetrahedral geometry, where we're gonna see our central atom surrounded by kind of like this pyramid shape down of these three atoms here, and then one sitting on top to form this kind of symmetrical tetrahedral geometry that we'd see for our molecule. If I have five electron groups, I'm gonna see this trigonal bipyramidal shape where I got my central atom forming a pyramid and another pyramid, so we call it trigonal bipyramidal, two pyramids. Uh, and we see here, this is not completely symmetrical. In the molecule, we have these equatorial positions. They're these three uh, atoms here that would be on the equator, per se, of the molecule. Then we have these axial positions, which would be on the axis uh, as we think of it rotating around that axis. And so we see these two different positions are gonna have two different kind of bond angles that we'd see. We're gonna see 120 degrees between these two atoms and a 90 degree bond between those two atoms. Finally, we can have uh, up to six electron groups. So that would be our octahedral geometry. Uh, we notice it's octahedral because we think of it as having eight sides. Uh, even though there is six vertices or six places where we're gonna find our atom. And we notice this is symmetrical, where we don't necessarily have a difference between axial and equatorial positions like we saw with our five electron group. Now, as we're predicting our molecular geometries, we're gonna start with our Lewis structures, because our Lewis structures are gonna inform us how many electron groups we have. Do I have two, three, four, five, or six? And then from there, we can predict the geometry that that molecule might make. Let's start by looking at a couple examples. The first two that we're gonna look at here is NF3 and CF2O, and we wanna predict the molecular geometries. Before we can do that, we need to draw our Lewis structure because our Lewis structure is gonna inform us about what electron groups we have present in my molecule. Do I have any lone pairs? Do I have single bonds, double bond, triple bonds? What does it look like for my molecule here? So if I look at NF3, and we wanna draw this molecule here, we have a total of 26 electrons in this molecule. 
five from our nitrogen, 21 for those three fluorines. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my skeletal structure, which is just nitrogen bonded to those three fluorines that are surrounding it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my electrons here. So I'm gonna give all my fluorines an octet, filling in our pairs here. And we noticed that we placed 24 electrons for those three bonds and those three sets of six pairs of electrons sitting on our fluorine atoms. So then we have two more electrons that can sit on our nitrogen atom. So now we see that our nitrogen atom and our fluorine atoms have an octet. They also have formal charges of zero if we were to calculate that. And so we see here that now we have this structure. From this structure, what we wanna do is we wanna identify the geometry. For us to predict the geometry, we're gonna look at two things. One is we're gonna look at the total number of electron groups which we're gonna find here is going to be one, two, three, four. So the total directions that we're gonna have electrons going around our nitrogen, we're focusing on our central atom. So we're gonna have four total electron groups. We also notice that we have one of those is a lone pair. So we have one non-bonding electron group or one set of lone pairs sitting on our central atom. So we find that we have one, two, three bonding electron groups. Those three bonding electron groups are going to inform us of the atoms we actually see in my molecule. Now my non-bonding electron groups, we don't observe those in a molecular geometry, but they influence the shape. So important here, they're going to influence the geometry of our molecule but we don't actually see them because there's these electron pairs in there. We only will observe in a molecular geometry where our atoms are. And so these three bonding electron groups are what we're gonna actually visualize or see in my molecule. Now, as I'm predicting out my molecular geometry, now that I found that I have four total electron groups, that tells me my electron geometry is going to be tetrahedral. Now that would mean, again, because we don't see this one non-bonding electron group, one of those we don't actually visualize. So even though we have this tetrahedral electron geometry, my molecular geometry is only seen with those three fluorine atoms. And so if I look at this molecule, we'll find my molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. And that would mean that my molecule is not flat, it's not planar, and as well it helps inform us of what my molecule will look like as we're considering its reactivity. So let's look at how we might go from our electron geometry to our molecular geometry, thinking about that tetrahedral geometry. So anything that has four electron groups is gonna have this base structure of a tetrahedral geometry. Now as I look at this, we'll find that I don't see one of these. So I can think of us removing that, and now I have a lone pair sitting right there. So now that lone pair is gonna influence my geometry, which pushes these uh, three fluorine atoms down, and that causes us to see that my molecule is a trigonal pyramidal shape. And we notice that that gives us uh, the shape based upon the lone pair sitting on the top there, but a tetrahedral electron geometry. This would give a 109 degree uh, bond angle between those two atoms uh, of our fluorine atoms in any one of those three bonds that we might look at. Let's go ahead and look at CF2O. CF2O is going to have 24 total electrons in our molecule based upon the valence electrons of carbon, fluorine, and oxygen. And so we'll go ahead and start by drawing in our base geometry or skeleton geometry for CF2O. I'm going to go ahead and now give all of my outside atoms, which is gonna be our oxygen atom and our two fluorine atoms, an octet. And we notice that we've placed all 24 electrons in this molecule and our carbon atom doesn't have an octet. The way that we can cause carbon to be, have an octet is the fact that one of these other atoms, either the fluorine atom or an oxygen atom is sharing an electron, an extra pair of electron with carbon. We can identify which atom, oxygen or fluorine, is gonna to wanna to form that extra bond with carbon based upon the formal charge. 
Now, we've talked about this previously in our resonance structures video, so I'm not gonna discuss why we would choose and see that our oxygen atom is gonna form this extra bond with, with carbon, because that gives a formal charge of carbon of zero, oxygen of zero, and both my fluorines of zero. So now that we see we have our good Lewis structure that defines the bonding of this molecule, we can go ahead and look at the number of bonding and non-bonding electron domains. So we see that we have one, two, three total electron groups. And as we look at that, we have one, two, three bonding electron groups. So one thing to note this double bond is one electron group. It's one direction that my electrons are going in between my oxygen and carbon atom. We notice that there are zero non-bonding electron groups, and that lets us know we don't have any lone pairs sitting on our central atom here. So from this information, we now have the ability to identify this would be a trigonal planar geometry for my molecule. We go ahead and grab that trigonal planar geometry. This would be where my molecule, we have our carbon atom in the middle, perhaps maybe our oxygen atom here, forming that double bond and a fluorine and fluorine. So again, we notice that whether it is a single bond or a double bond, they're gonna influence the geometry in the same way. Will affect maybe our bond energy and length, but it's not gonna affect our geometry of our molecule for when we see that single or double bond around my central atom. Finally, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and practice predicting the molecular geometries of these two molecules, phosphorus pentachloride and the nitrite ion. So go ahead and pause the video, write out your Lewis structures, predict the geometry, and then come back and look at what I said here. All right, so for PCL5, we're gonna have phosphorus surrounded by our five chlorines. Uh, then we go ahead and we add up the electrons that we have. We're gonna see a total of 40 valence electrons here. I'm gonna go ahead and give every single one of my chlorine atoms an octet. So they need six more. And we notice that that gives my chlorine atoms an octet. My phosphorus atom has more than an octet, which it can because it can expand its octet. Uh, and we find that also if we calculate the formal charge of every single one of our atoms, it's equal to zero. So now that I have my Lewis structure, I have the ability to then predict my molecular geometry for phosphorus pentachloride. We notice that we have one, two, three, four, five bonding electron groups. And we also notice that we have zero non-bonding electron groups for our phosphorus atom because there is no lone pairs on our phosphorus atom. So that would mean now I could go ahead and predict my geometry. So I have five total electron domains. All of those are bonding electron groups or electron domains. And that tells me we have a trigonal bipyramidal geometry, which we can go ahead and look at it looks something like this, where we have two pyramids, right? An upwards and a downwards pyramid. Uh, and we have, again, our axial and equatorial positions for our chlorine atoms here. Finally, we can write out the Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. So we have nitrogen surrounded by our two oxygens here. We have a total of 18 electrons in this molecule. So I'm gonna go ahead and put brackets around here to indicate that I have a negative one charge. I will give all of my oxygen atoms on the outside an octet. We've used a total of 16 electrons, so I have an extra pair I can go ahead and put on my nitrogen atom. Now we notice here that, again, our nitrogen atom doesn't have an octet. Well, we can find that we can take one of those oxygen atoms and allow it to form a double bond with nitrogen, which gives both my oxygen atoms an octet, our nitrogen an octet, and leaves a negative one formal charge sitting on the oxygen to the left that we've drawn here. Now, we're always gonna have one atom with an, at least a negative formal charge because my molecule has a negative charge here. Now that we have this uh, structure drawn here, we notice we could have drawn it another way where we could have drawn a double bond 
to the oxygen on the left and then a single bond to the oxygen on the right, these would be two equivalent in energy resonance structures for the nitrite ion. Now that we have those two structures, what we'll notice is if we analyze either one, those two resonance structures are gonna give us the same geometry. So again, if I look at this, I got one, two bonding electron domains in my left structure or one, two bonding electron domains or groups in my right structure. So we have two bonding electron groups. We notice that we have one lone pair, depending on either structure we look at. That means I have one non-bonding electron group. So that would mean, I, that tells me I have three total electron groups, which is gonna have an electron geometry of trigonal planar, but again, one of those electrons we don't see, and this is gonna give us a bent molecular geometry. Again, if we look at our molecule here, this would be our electron geometry. Now we don't see one of those lone pairs, and so that notices that we notice that that gives us a bent geometry for our molecule. So hopefully this video gives us a good introduction and in how we can go from Lewis structures based upon a molecular formula that's given to us to then go to a molecular geometry based upon our electron groups that we find, whether they'd be bonding or non-bonding electron groups.